This experiment is to demonstrate Archimedes' principle, which is to de determine the upthrust on an object that is immersed in water. So we're going to use a metal block, empty beakers, some water, and an Eureka can, or otherwise called overflow can. First thing I'm going to do is to take the mass of the solid, that is 380 grams. The next thing I want to do is to measure the mass of an empty beaker, that is 120 grams. The next step I want to do is to pour some water into the overflow can. So I want to put an empty beaker below the sprout of the Eureka can, or otherwise called the overflow can. Pour some water into it. Fill it all the way up. Once the water starts running, you will stop and allow the water to fully run over. All right. Once that stops running, we can move on to our next step. So our next step is to do now put our empty beaker that we measure our mass off underneath the sprout of the yucca can. Then we're going to slightly immerse, slowly immerse our solid into the water. Notice as you immerse the water, the solid in the water, the water is being displaced. Okay, the displaced water, now we can go ahead and measure it. So once the water stops running, so once this is finished, we're going to take it and check our new mass. So our new mass for the beaker with the water is now 154 grams. Now after this, you can go ahead and do your calculations to determine the upthrust on the object. And remember, the upthrust will be equal to the weight of the liquid that is being displaced. Now, let us look at the experimental results. We're gonna use these results to do some calculations so we can better express our understanding of Archimedes' principle. But before I get into the calculations, what I want to do is to explain a concept. The concept that I want to explain here is that when a solid is immersed in a fluid, it will displace some of the fluid. In fact, it will displace the same volume as the solid. There are also two forces that are in play. One that is acting downwards and another force that is acting upwards. So the force that is acting downwards is the weight of a solid, which is calculated as mass times gravity. The force that is acting upwards is the upthrust, which is a force that is called the buoyant force. And this force is a force of the water that is pushing against the solid. And this is the same as the weight of the displaced water. Now, I want to look at the data from the experiment because the data will be very useful in our calculations. So based on the experiment, we have measured the mass of the solid and that was 380 grams. We also measured the mass of the empty beaker, which was 120 grams. We also measured the mass of the beaker with the displaced water, and this was 154 grams. Based on these measurement, we can now calculate the mass of water displaced, which is 34 grams. How do we get 34 grams is the difference between the empty beaker and the beaker with the displaced water. So the difference, 154 minus 120, will give us our 34 grams. This information, again, we're going to use it to do some calculations. 
The first thing I'm going to calculate here is the up thrust. Remember, the up thrust is given as the weight of the water that was being displaced. How do we calculate weight? Remember, weight is mass times gravity. We have the mass of water, so we're going to investigate this mass of water, and then we can find our weight. Now, the mass of water is given in grams. So we have 34 grams of displaced water. However, we want to convert our grams into kilograms. So therefore, 34 grams is, is equivalent to 0 0.034 kilograms. Because from grams to kilograms, we divide by a thousand. Now once we have this mass, we can now find our weight. So the weight of the water that was being displaced is now the mass times gravity. We're taking the value for gravity to be 10 newtons per kilograms. Therefore, 0 0.034 multiplied by 10 is 0 0.34 newtons. Since the weight of the water being displaced is the upthrust, then we can say the upthrust now is equal to 0 0.34 newtons. Again, it is the same as the weight of the water that was displaced. Now, our next calculation is going to be the density of the solid. Remember, density is equal to mass divided by volume. Now, the mass of our solid is 380 grams. Now, however, we did not measure the volume of the solid. But how can we determine that? Remember, when you immerse a solid in a liquid, the liquid that is being displaced, the volume of that liquid, is the same as the volume of the solid that is immersed in that liquid. So therefore, volume of solid is equivalent to the volume of water displaced. Now, in the experiment, we did not measure the volume of water being displaced, but there's something that we need to remember. We need to remember that water is a is an unique substance. It's unique in the sense that it has a density of one gram per centimeter cube. So therefore, we can remember that the volume is the same as its mass. So if the mass is 34 grams, it therefore means the volume is also 34 centimeters cube. And simply because the density is one gram per centimeters cube. All right, so that's something that we need to know. So once we establish the volume of the water being displaced, it is the same as the volume of the solid that was immersed in that fluid. In this case, it is water. So we now we can find the density of a solid. And the density of a solid now is going to be 380 grams, which is the, solid, the mass of a solid, divided by the volume of the solid, which is the same as the volume of water being displaced, which is 34. So now our density is 11.18 grams per centimeters cube. Now our next thing that we want to look at is based on these properties, can we identify the type of metal that was used in the experiment? Think about it. How can we figure it out? Now we can use the density to determine what metal it is. So the density of the metal is 11.18 grams per centimeters cube. Now if you do the research and look at the density of different substances, you'll realize that lead has a density of 11.3 to about 11.4, and that is for pure lead. However, this number is really close to that value. Now, why 
we did not get an exact value is simply because of a number of reasons or a number of possibilities. One of them could be that the metal used in the experiment was not pure lead. It could be a mixture, okay? Additionally, when water was coming out of the Eureka can, some of the water droplets could go on the side of the beaker or even on the side of the Eureka can. All right, so the experimental errors could lead to you not getting an exact value. But this is close enough and acceptable. So we can assume that the metal used in the experiment is lead. Now we have one more question for you. Why did the solid sink? Now let's think about it. Remember our first diagram, right? A force going downwards and a force going upwards. If the force that going downwards is greater than the force that going upwards, then the solid will sink. And of course, the opposite is also true. If the force that is going up is at least, at least equivalent to the force going down, then the object will float. So let's jump into it. The weight of a solid is the mass of a solid multiplied by gravity. However, our mass was in grams, so let's convert that into kilograms first. So that's why we have 380 divided by 1,000 to convert in kilograms, then multiply by 10 newtons per kilograms. So our force that is acting downwards, which is the weight of a solid, is 3.8 newtons. The upward force, which is the up thrust that we already calculated, is 0 0.3 for newtons so by looking at the numbers you realize the force that going down which is 3.8 is greater than the up thrust hence the solid sink all right and so this was great and now we're at the end of it and again i truly appreciate you watching these lessons and i want to tell you please measure your will against your own strength so I want you to dream it, act it, and just do it. Have a great day. Keep blessed. Keep safe. See you next time.